that. So thank you once again. Safaricom will not let us down today. <laughs> thank you all of you who have gathered here today. This is the third edition of a series of East Africa virtual tastings that we've been doing. As you may well know, we would rather meet you in person and enjoy everything face to face. But because of the circumstances we've been facing, we've had lockdowns, we've had restrictions on sales, we've had all this uh, impact on our different businesses because of the COVID pandemic. But what is so great about having to meet virtually is sometimes we even have more access than we would. We're meeting producers firsthand. We are people, there's people from all over around the world coming together together. Today there's Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, South Africa, Dubai. And I mean, I don't know whether there's anybody else from another country that let us know. So this is so great for us. And the two previous sessions we had on Shannon Blanc in July and Cabernet Sauvignon in August were very educative. I am also the Wines and Spirit Education Trust educator in Nairobi. So it means I spend a lot of time with wine and wine brands. But through this session, I'm still learning so much and you know, refreshing my knowledge and sharpening my knowledge on the different brands. So we are so glad that you're here and you took the time. We know it's a work day, but this is work as well as we get to learn. This is the first time we are in line with everybody else, uh, having, uh, you know, the celebrations are going on around the world today for Club Classic Day because Club Classic is how old today? How old is it today? 50. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Um, I know majority of us are under 50, so it might not quite be able, we're not quite be able to know what's in our minds, but just imagine that 50 years of legacy, 50 years of doing great things. So we have a very full program with us today, very exciting. First, I want to ask you to put what's in your glass in the chat. You want to see different brands people are drinking and experiencing because we do hope you have classic today. In some of the registrations, some of you said, I know nothing about Cap Classic. Well, you came to the right place because when you leave today, I'm sure you'll get 100% on the quiz I will provide you at the end of the day, right? I just want to share the program quickly on the screen so that I can, we can know what we have coming for us. And I hope I'll be able to do that um, shortly. If not, I'll just post the actual just give me a minute here. I think when I went off my settings sort of reset themselves, I had it open. Let me stop the share first, sorry, and get the document going. But in essence, we'll have welcome and introductions. We'll have a welcome from Matume Mbata, who's the Africa representative of water. We have uh, Caroline from the Cap Plastic Producers Association. We love that, so that she can give us an overview of what this association is about and what this drink is about. And then we get into the tasting part and this will be done by different people. Some will be done by the producer, some by the winemaker, others by the importer on the ground. So we have that going on. And from time to time, I'll call upon you as the audience to say something or to give answers to specific questions. Was that great, right? Awesome. So the hashtags to use today are protected by time. Um, there is uh, Cap Classic, drink Cap Classic, and Cap Classic at 50. So please share this and let everybody know what a great time you're having with us today and ensure that they all know about Cap Classic, right? Let me share the screen to have that program with you and then we can go on ahead. Okay, I'm just getting my Zoom sorted out here. Awesome. Right, so that's what we have. So we'll have the welcome and introductions that we've done. We've identified a lot of you coming back. Then we'll have the overview of the East Africa virtual tastings by Worcester. Caroline from the Cap Classic Producers Association will be speaking. And then we have a different people producers here. So we have Douglas Green Bellingham. Today I remember Dimitri. <laughs> There's uh, the wine shop with an importer here in Kenya. There's Joss Hansen. So we have Lisa, Lisa Marie from Simon Sig and Christine as well. There'll be someone from Lawrence Ford Haynes. Uh, Diane, who's an importer of the Lomarine. 
we'll have um, someone from Uganda duty free uh, tasting Hill and Dale, someone from Uganda trade working in Onomo Kampala, one of the hotels there. Uh, someone from Tanzania, a sommelier called Jeanette, and then we'll have John who is from the Silverstone Wine Estate. I hope my internet will hold up. I'm getting all these warnings, but we are great to have a good start and we look forward to you. So there are the tags at Wainjiro at Wosa, Drink Cup Classic, Cup Classic at 50 and Perfected by Time. And then there's also the details for the Cup Classic Association right there. So let's get started. Please let us know whether you're a wine enthusiast, whether you work in the trade and the like. If possible, it would be great to have your video on, but we do understand sometimes the network issues are a problem. Uh, but then post your questions in the chat. Let's have an interactive session. And if you have any question, perhaps let me know that I can be able to give you an opportunity, but we'll stick to the formal program first and then we'll have a Q&A right at the end. So let's go for it. Matume, are you ready to welcome us and start us off? I'm all thrilled, excited to have you all join us. Welcome and a very spring day welcome and a jubilee welcome from the Cup Classic South African wine industry. Three, four part session, visual tasting for East Africa markets. I really welcome you and I'm very thrilled and excited. I'm even wearing a very colorful floral shirt today on one objective, just to ensure that we are all in the same spirit of a lovely day it is today. 50 years it's been, that the first production of Cup Classic was produced in South Africa. More details will be shared to us by Caroline, as well as one of the wineries that actually produced the first Cup Classic in the Western Cape. I'm very thrilled and excited to have you all join us. As a brief, brief background, you know, the objective of us doing these tastings, obviously we are limited to traveling and being with you physically, which is obviously for me, priority number one, to be in the markets. I would say the same feeling would be for you as importers, traders, as well as producers, would be to interact and engage one-on-one -on -one with each other about the wine, but we still find ways of doing it innovatively so. Very main objective of this tasting is just to ensure that there's ongoing generic platforms that are created for you as our stakeholders, as well as us as other canoe kind of industry, um, to ensure that we are present in the minds of consumers through point of reference, because if we do these recordings, we post them on our social media platforms. In turn, consumers as well as your customers can be able to access them and learn more. But it's also another way of sharing knowledge, sharing information about each other's brands. So on that note, I really welcome you all. And I think this will be most fascinating. It's bubbles, you can't go wrong. This earlier on, I taught Caroline a word in Zulu. I'm a bottler, and it's a popular, you know, saying here in the township here in South Africa, pop my bottle, pop cup classic, which means pop the bottles, pop cup six. Let's celebrate. It's a day to celebrate. And let's have a good time. Anjira, I really thank you for putting this together. I'm handing back over to you. We've got so much to explore, so much wine to taste, and I look forward to it. Thank you. Oh, Wanjiro, you're on mute. Have we lost Wanjiro? On that note. No, no, no. Sorry, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm just trying to multitask. I'm sorry about that. Thank you so much, Matume. Matume is an adopted son of East Africa. We know he loves Kenya since we began this uh, relationship with water in 2015. In fact, I think it's time we gave him a Kenyan name. <laughs> He already wears the Maasai blanket and we look forward to when you'll be able to visit again. Thank you so much for your support as always. And thank you for bringing us such great resources every time we have this event. Now there's the Cup Classic Producers Association and I'll just let Caroline take us through what they do, what it means and why it's so important even to have this celebration today. Caroline, over to you. Thank you very much, Wanjiru, and, and a big thank you to Matumi and, and the whole team at Woza for inviting me here today. And also for taking Cap Classic on as one of your sort of um, long time loves. Uh, it's really greatly appreciated from an from a association perspective. 
Um, and I know that we're in great hands with um, Wandira, you and, and all of your efforts that you do and, and Matumi, all of the efforts that you do for WOZA. I always get very excited when I get a little call from Matomi on my phone because I know that it means there's something fun happening in Africa and that is always a good reason to celebrate. So I'm just going to share my screen with you. We prepared a little, um, just a one pager, which I will share with you afterwards as well. Uh, can you all see that? Is a way to in increase the screen and maybe zoom a bit. Yeah, there I can see. Go. Okay, so awesome. I'm going to zoom through as we go. <laughs> All right, so this is really just a, um, let me show you the whole thing. This is just a capital seek really in a nutshell. And what we've been working on over the, uh, over the last few days is just to um, remove all of the, we'll take out all of the African markets from the service data and then to just drop them in here. So I'm very happy to share this with you and you can keep it. Um, it's the African export stats for from the July last year until August this year. So I'll talk a little bit about that shortly. But um, just a little bit of an intro. So the very first Cap Classic was produced in 1971, and that is by our friend Simon Sach. I'm not going to speak too much about that. Um, I know Lisa Marie is also on this call, so she will, I'm sure, embellish you with the fabulous stories and tales of how it all began. Um, but yes, this year we're celebrating a golden jubilee. It's 50 years of Cap Classic. It's really something super special. Um, I feel like I've been waiting my whole life for this to happen. And now it's here and it's almost like a second birthday. So it's really amazing. Um, the Cap Classique Producers Association was founded in 1992. Uh, what happened was once the first Cap Classique was produced, there were a couple of producers that sort of jumped on the bandwagon and also started producing um, Cap Classique. One of those was Boschendal. They're actually celebrating um, 40 years of Cap Classique this year and Graham Becker celebrating 30 years and Hort Cabrier. So there's quite a few of them that had already started producing bubbly sort of in the 70s and 80s after Simonsach. And in 1992, uh, headed by Jeff Greer and Peter Ferreira, they established the uh, Cap Classique Producers Association, of which there were 14 founding members. So there were 14 wineries. And um, funny enough, I got the first minutes of their very first meeting, which was about 10 minutes and then the rest of it was tasting. And the very first bottle, um, th they had a, a thing about how much money it was going to cost to send um, some media a bottle of Cap Classique, and it cost three rand. So we've come a long way in raising the, the pricing of Cap Classique, I'm very uh, pleased to say. Um, it's also just an indication of how things have changed. So at the moment, we have over 100 uh, member wineries. Uh, those are producers. And our total production is about 10.25 million bottles. Um, the, the 100 registered member wineries are responsible for about 9.25 million bottles, but they are actually um, in excess of 280 different wineries producing Cap Classic in South Africa today. Um, not all of them are obviously members, some produce in tiny volume, some just do it as a side project, some only do it for their restaurants or whatever. But we do account for, um, as I said, 9.25 million of the 10 and, and 10.25 million. So we are very much all encompassing. Um, an exciting development that happened this year is uh, the legal minimum time on lease moved from nine months to 12 months. And that was really, it came out of a lot of um, trial and, and tribulations from the committee and the technical committee in um, the quality and effect of lease time on Cap Classique. And we've definitely found that the longer time that the wine sits, the better the quality. And um, we're hoping down the line, we'll be able to move that further to 15 months and then also to possibly even establish a sort of prestige cuvee um, lease, uh, lease category, which, which will probably be 36 months or even longer than that. So those are plans that we have down the line. But um, basically what you can be assured of from even from before, every single bottle of Cap Classique, if it bears the, um, the Cap Classique name um, and the Cap Classique word on the label, it means that it's at least had nine months in the bottle. And from this year, it will be 12 months in the bottle. And then just some regulations, if you don't know, um, the bottle needs to be at a minimum of three bars of pressure. And um, that's kind of what you put in your car tire as well. So it's, it's, um, it's, quite, a, it's quite a pressure filled container, this bottle. Um, and also that the, the same bottle that the wine was fermented in goes to market. So 
the whole process from pretty much from when you put the wine in for the secondary fermentation all the way through to the wine that ends up on the shelf it happens in the same bottle and that is the signature trait of a cap classique so the top cap classique producing um, per region uh, from this first little graph over here let me zoom in a little bit so you can see probably a bit better oh, mm, mm, come on oh it doesn't want me to zoom in now Anyway, can you all see that? Anyway, it's um, the majority of the Cap Classique producers sit in Paul and Stellenbosch. Um, and Robertson also is a very a prominent area. And then the rest of these little ones, um, lots of different areas producing Cap Classique. Um, the, the bottom graph is the domestic sales in nine litre cases. Up until quite recently, um, we didn't actually have a differentiator at Sarvis with, for Cap Classique and sparkling wine. It was all just called sparkling wine. And what the association has been doing is lobbying to create a differentiator this so that we get more accurate figures on for sales and such. So this is the domestic sales um, it goes uh, from 2010 to 2020 and you can see the dark orange line is the cap classique and the lighter orange line um, is sparkling, but you can see how cap classique is on a beautiful growth trend upwards. Last year, uh, you all know we had a very difficult year in this country with all the alcohol bans and, and such so it would be, of course, a bit obvious that we would have a slight drop there domestically, but I'm quite sure, and based on the feedback from the members, we're clawing space back. So hopefully next year's figure will carry on in that trend again. And the same goes for the exports at the bottom. And what is interesting is the last graph in 2020, you can see we actually, um, we didn't drop at all. We are a little bit up from last year, which is really great news. And that's probably all because of Matomi and the rest of Woes' super hard work in um, promoting South African wines abroad. So the top three export African markets um, is Nigeria, Angola, and Mauritius. I know Mauritius is an island, but when we go Google says it's an East African island, so it's, <laughs> we lumped that right in. Um, and there you can see I've, I've split out all of, the, um, all of the different markets that we sell to. The total liters um, that we sell to Africa is 118,000 liters, and that's about 157,000 bottles. The total rand value is just um, over 14 million rand. And we have a really fantastic average price per bottle here. It's, um, it was surprisingly great for me to see that at 119 rand per bottle. So this is really um, basically Cap Classique, Cap Classique in a nutshell. And I'm just going to unshare now and see if I can maybe oh, try and there again, I just want to try and get this. I don't know why it won't allow me to zoom in now. Sorry, let me just do that again. I just want to explore a little bit of those markets with you further. No, oh, it won't allow me to. I'll put it in, I'm going to put this PDF in the chat group um, straight after this, then you can all you can all go and have a look. So a little bit about um, just briefly about Cap Classique Day in general. Um, very exciting. Cap Classique Day was something that was started three years ago, and I remember the very first one, um, uh, the committee and myself were sitting around the table at Colmont, and I suggested we should just have a Cap Classique Day because every wine seems to have a day on the calendar, and Peter turned around and said, okay, well, let's just do it next week on the 1st of September because everyone loves Spring Day. So that's how it started, and it was really in the very beginning um, very few people knew about it and um, there wasn't this sort of great um, following that we have now, but we had to start somewhere. And then last year it got a little bit more busy. There was, um, I got a couple of people getting involved and some of the producers were exciting. But I think this year, Danielle and I in the office had no idea what to expect. And I must say, we have been absolutely bowled over with the incredible support both locally and abroad for this special day. Um, it's really it's it's been such a privilege and such an honor to work on this on this account and and to grow the category and and I'm really I'm so excited about the future for the category I think there's a lot going for it it's the fastest growing South African um, category of of wine and and I think it's just it really captures the imagination and it captures something super special so thanks again for having me here. Um, my drink of choice, we're actually going off to a, a dinner at Jordan this evening with it's a regional Cap Classique dinner. So I'm going to be very spoiled and be having five different Cap Classiques this evening. Um, but we will be sure to have a toast and, and tag everybody in. So thank you very much for having me. And I look forward to hearing what everyone else has to say today.
Wow, thank you so much, Caroline. And what a wonderful you know, overview you've given on everything and also the facts and figures. I know you are throwing some names around and I'm expecting some questions around some of these names. You talked about three bars of pressure. You talked about prestige cuvee and the like. For me, maybe to start off just a quick Q&A for your segment in particular. I'm really excited to learn perhaps the big categories within the Club Classique. There's different categories. I don't want to name them, but um, I was looking to the Amarine Cape Classic Challenge. So perhaps you can give us those categories for people to see how versatile this product is. And even for the people in the trade here, I think there is so much opportunity in this category. I, I cringe every time I look at restaurant menus and I don't see any Cap Classic, but I see the other sparkling wines from the other places that we should not talk about today. But then if you think about the value Cap Classic provides and the variety, it's so amazing. And I hope this will be one of the changes that comes from this. But perhaps you can touch on the different categories for the others to learn. Thank you. Yes, of course. And I, just for ease of um, reference, I'll stick to the categories that we use at the Amaram Cap Classic Challenge, which by the way, the results are in. We're announcing the, the 2021 um, results on the 16th of September. So that's really something to look forward to. Um, the first one is the Brutes category. Um, that can be Brut blends. Um, usually it's Pinot Noir and Chardonnay, but there are other varieties, of course, that are allowed to be in there. Then we have a Blanc de Blanc category, which is generally 100% Chardonnay, but it can be any white wine. Um, and then we have the rosé category, which uh, really as a style is more to do with color. So um, from lightly pink to a deep sort of burnt um, onion skin or salmon color, they're all into the rosé categories. And then we have um, at the Cap Classique Challenge, we have the museum class, which is the, uh, the vintage uh, bubbly. I think it has to be a certain amount of um, time on the lease or, or out of market for a certain amount of time. So. Um, those are really the, the oh, of course, sorry, and then demi sec. how could I forget? Um, the fastest growing uh, style of, of Cap Classique. Um, it's a big one. We get a lot of entries um, into that. And I think everybody always wants to win the demi sec one because it's really one of the, it is the fastest growing style of the category. So yeah, those are the, those are the different styles. Um, what Wandero mentioned earlier, which I really love is that Cap Classique is so very versatile. Um, it, in South Africa, we have several different varieties. We have Chenin Blanc, we have Chardonnay, we have Pinotage, we have Shiraz. Um, I know John Lopesha, who's also on this call, they make a fantastic um, Cap Classique called the Genie, which is made, I think 100% Shiraz. Um, and, and, he's, and he's got a lot of, uh, of great uh, stories to tell about how fantastic Shiraz is for making bubbly. But yeah, um, I think in, in other regions, um, they're quite strict with what can go into the bottle um, in terms of varieties. But in South Africa, we love a little bit of, of variety and we love a little bit of difference. So exciting. Thank you very much, Caroline. So I look forward to more questions coming through because I know you're with us for the whole session, but let's begin. Some of you who are on this call are looking forward to weaning. Uh, we have a giveaway with about six bottles for people who attended this call. We have two for Kenya, two for Uganda, two for Tanzania. So just by being here, you could be taking home some bottles today. Other than that, I told you there's a quiz. So this facts and figures are really important. I'm a teacher, I'm sorry, I have to examine. <laughs> so, so be very clear about the questions you ask and perhaps some of, some of these facts and figures as well. Awesome, now without any further ado, I want to get on straight to the different brands on. And I want to start with a friend of Wartha, a friend of all these virtual tastings. I know he supported us through the spectacular South Africa last year. And even this year, uh, for the first two sessions we've had, he's been a great supporter. Unfortunately, he's not living in Kenya anymore, but then uh, we know his work spans the region. And that is our Greek god, Dimitri. Dimitri, are you ready? I'm ready. Hello, everyone. How are you? Um, so firstly, I need to apologize. Um, my glass is empty because we had some birthday celebrations last night and no birthday can be complete without a bottle of blood bubbly. So we climbed into a couple of bottles of the Franchuk Cellars Brut Royale last night and brought in 
couple of seat day at about half past 12 this morning. So uh, <laughs> cheers to everyone for joining us. Um, I just thought I would share a little video of something that's going on in Cape Town at the moment. Um, uh, if one year I could turn my screen sharing on. So all the winemakers and all the, the MCC makers have got- There you go, you have it. Thank you. Um, and they're all having a bit of fun with uh, the MCCs that they make. So this is a little bit on Sabraj and then, yeah, all the guys having a bit of fun. I'm sorry, this sounds not great. It's, uh, it's a, a video, but just if you watch, you'll see. So that's, that's all the MCC makers in South Africa having a bit of fun today, doing a bit of surprise with their products. Um, that was sent through to me by Ryan Puttick, who's the Franchic Cellars winemaker and wine master. So uh, he asked me to put this up and also send his uh, apologies for not being able to jo join the, the call. But he was, as you can see, freezing in Cape Town and having some fun with, with the bubbles down there. So um, yeah, thanks again for having me. To those I haven't met and to the familiar faces I see here, um, I work for a company called DGB, Douglas Green Bellingham, and I look after East Africa. Um, very fortunate that we have such lovely brands in our stables, such as Franchuk, which we've tasted a few, few different varietals over the past couple of shows. Um, as mentioned earlier, Boschendal is also turning 40 years old this year with the MCCs, and that's also another one of my brands. So I'm really spoiled when it comes to choice of MCC. Um, definitely a super crack category. People love it. You know, it's just a case of getting liquid on lips. And, and as Matomi will tell you in East Africa, they, they go crazy, absolutely crazy for MCC when they get it out there. Um, so yeah, just a little bit about the, the Franchuk seller based in Franchuk. Um, we have a, a Brut Royale and a Brut Rosé. And I think uh, Maria has got the, the Brut Rosé. So thank you, Maria, for, for a bit of support there. Um, but onto the Brut Royale, it's a non-vintage. Um, we use 53% Chardonnay grapes, 47% Pinot Noir, so very typical blend. Ryan will then whole bunch press it, and he takes the best juice he can, and then um, lets that settle in steel tanks for 48 hours. After which we, we, we ferment and let it mature on the leaves. Um, once that's all done, as was mentioned earlier, we, the, the new rules and regulations are minimum of 12 months. So we actually let this sit for between 12 to 15 months. After which we do the fantastic disgorging, get all the dead leaves out, and then we add a little bit of dressage, which is the nice sweet um, wine, cork it up again, and that's what creates the, the secondary fermentation in order to get the fantastic bubble you see in front of you. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just a lovely product. Matomi, Wanjiro, again, thank you for having this platform. Um, this is widely available in Kenya at the moment. We're working on getting it into the other East African markets. So keep your eyes out for some Franchuk. It's delicious. It's really affordable. And um, to everybody, happy Cap Cacique Day. Thank you very much, Dimitri. Thank you very much. Indeed, 
French hook fella. I keep saying that name is a test to my pronunciation because of my mother tongue influence. Um, is, is really great value for money. It just comes under just above 2000 on the retail price. And, um, you know, having been gone through all the processes and the like, there's no reason why you shouldn't be popping this up anywhere. As we know, wine is made through fermentation. So maybe just a bit of introduction. You start with still white, but then you want to be able to have the bubble, which is what all the celebration we have today. So how do we do that? And we have to ferment again, but this time they ferment in the bottle. Remember Caroline said the second fermentation has to be the same bottle that is sold into the market. It has to be a really strong bottle. And of course there's the cock, there's the cage, and there's the lovely foil. You know, the best way to recognize capital stick, I say that it always has a crown on. It's never crownless. So thank you so much for that. There's of course the two um, products available from you, which is the the rosé and the brut and uh, yes, and it's just over 2,000 shillings in Kenya. I'm not sure how much it goes for in the other markets, but really, really good value for money and very, very great tasting as well. Cheers indeed, and thank you, Dimitri. We are still waiting for your other brands to get into the market. There's a lot, I think there's some people who mentioned Washington a lot in terms of what they had today. We're still missing that MCC here. We're looking forward to have it. When will it be coming? Coming soon. Hopefully, we'll get it in for Christmas. <laughs> if not for Christmas, okay. And um, Jan Fair before goes to plan. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And of course, you're represented in the East African market by Viva Global in Kenya. There is uh, Zed MMI in Zanzibar. Uh, there is, uh, oh, I forget, Uganda in Tanzania. Maybe reminders. <laughs> in Tanzania, we're represented by Mohan's Oyster Bay. And in Uganda, we're represented by Vikrams. There you go. So no matter where you are in the region, you can get your hands on Cap Classic, and there's no excuse at all that you wouldn't be able to have that. So thank you, thank you, thank you, and cheers. Now we head to Simon's Sig. Maria's just sent me a message saying. We head to Simon's Sig. Which Sorry, I didn't get that. I didn't get that, uh, Dimitri. I was just saying, Maria's just sent me a, a message on the, the front chat saying, this drink understands the assignment. I totally agree with that. <laughs> we agree with that. It definitely understands the assignment. And of course, the alcohol levels in Cap Classic are much lower than the red wine typically. It's between 11% and 12%. So maybe that's an excuse to drink more than usual as you celebrate as well. Now you've been told that Simon Sik was the first producer of Cap Classic and the Simon Sik Cap Sofonkel. I hope my Afrikaans is correct in that pronunciation. In Kenya, they are represented by Joss Hansen. I'll be very honest, when I had Joss Hansen, I thought of uh, insecticides and fertilizers. Sorry, I'll just mute Christine for a bit. Uh, insecticides and fertilizers, but I've been glad to know that their wine division is one of a very, very, uh, have very, very great team. And uh, if you've met Christine anywhere, especially in the trade, you know that she can sell ice to an Eskimo. I've been with her in different events. We've had both for water and on an individual brand level. And uh, we start with a brief this much, we end with this much sales. So. She's, she's a hard nut to crack and she sells and sells and sells. Um, she's brought along a team with her. I know there's a lot of people from Joss Hansen. There's Joy as well in the wine team. And more so, they also have the producer, Trace from Simon Sig, Lisa Marie here as well. I'll go over now and ask Christine to introduce her team and to take us through the presentation. Over to you, Christine. Sorry, Christine, there's some feedback on your side. Thanks a lot, Wanjiro. Thanks a lot, Wanjiro. Ahead, 
Okay, we are the Simon Sig team. I'm here with my team. We are very many of us. There's Joy, there's Rosie. We are all having our different types of uh, cup classic. Everyone has your spoils for choice, actually. And we are glad to be here on Jiro. Matume, thank you very much for having this event. And we'll just go straight ahead and invite our Simon Sig representative from South Africa, Lisa Marie. Then Joy will wind up. Yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity, um, everybody. Um, thank you, Christine, Joy, and I thought I saw Kennedy's name there. Ralph has uh, joined. But um, firstly, thank you for your sons and for representing Simon Sig in Kenya. I've, I've had the honor to visit them there, and it's, it's really an amazing team, and, um, and it's, a, it's a wonderful country, and we have um, really built Simon Sig with Jos Hansen to really become um, a, a, a very, what was that, powerful but a well-known brand in, in Kenya. Um, so, yeah, today is obviously, um, yeah, Cup to Sig Day, but, you know, I've got, um, it's cold in, in, in Cape Town, um, in Paul, where I am. Um, I was on the farm this morning and we had big celebrations um, for Cup to Six. So uh, it all started, uh, like you know, in 1971. And it's actually Franz Malan, the, the pioneer and founder of Simon Sich, he went to Champagne in 1968. And he saw what they did there and he thought, well, if, if the French can do it, why can't we? And then he came back and started and there was actually nothing available to make um, Cup to Six or bottle fermented sparkling in South Africa. Um, and the first one was then, um, I mean, there were no Pinot Noir, Pinot Meunier, um, you know, Chardonnay grapes for, for, uh, for, for Champagne. So the first one was made actually from Chenin Blanc. So, you know, the very first cup of the uh, was was Carps of called the Brut, and then it was released in 1971. And I think Caroline mentioned it was three rand a bottle, which was the most expensive wine on the market then. So... It was quite a challenge for France um, to promote this wine and actually on the bottle, on the label, it said fermented in this bottle so that people could understand. But it had to come with a whole um, almost like an illustration of the process because people didn't understand that. They only understood um, sparkling wines. And then it was only in 1987 that Johan Malan, which is second generation winemaker, started using Pinot Noir and Chardonnay in the, in, in, um, in the Carps of Funkel. And then it was a decade later that Pinot Meunier was um, introduced to that. Um, so what I was saying was I was drinking today. So that's the, the Carps of Funkel 2019 that's in the market currently. And for the whole year, we've got this neck label saying um, celebrating 50, um, just to, to commemorate the 50 then um, what we also have in the market, we have our uh, Brut Rosé. So the Brut Rosé was introduced uh, in 2006, and, um, and that is Pinot uh, Meunier, and it's also got some Pinotage as well in the blend. And then we're very excited this year to have um, changed our packaging on our uh, Demi Sec. So we've got the Satin Nectar uh, Brut and the Satin Nectar Brut Rosé. So this has been recently introduced. We launched it in February this year, and it is in market as well. And it's really been, um, it's, it just shows sort of the fun um, element of, of this. And it, and it really speaks to the people that we think enjoy Cup de Sick, um, and also definitely in the, in the sweeter styles. Um, yes, we, um, you know, um, it's just absolutely been wonderful, uh, a wonderful journey. I know I don't have a lot of time um, to talk about it. I think we can talk about Cup Classic for, for, for a long time. Um, but um, what just something stands out for me about um, Simon Sich or Cup Classic in general, it's, it's really powerful and it's intense, but it's got a great elegancy to it. All the wine shows that I've been to in all the years, I've been in the industry for um, oh, is it 22, 23 years. I'm giving my age away. I actually turned 50 last Week so I celebrated also um, you know uh, my birthday in 1971 and I feel very honoured to to share it with with Cap the second Cap's uh, Cap's phone call. Um, just something that Caroline also mentioned that it's got to be 12 months on the lease. We've at Simon Sich, we have a minimum of 15 months on the lease, so between 15 months and 18 months. So it really is. Um, I really appreciate the oldest. I think Matumi said you were drinking the 2015. 
Um, that was the vintage that uh, won last year, um, Johan Milan, which is second generation. He's the one that um, the 2015 vintage is the one that he won the uh, Diners Club winemaker of the year last year. So that is a very special vintage. Um, and yes, we also have, I don't have it here today, but we also have our Cuba Royale, uh, which is the Blanc de Blanc, 100% Chardonnay as well, um, available. And yeah, thank you just for, um, for, for just supporting us. And um, again, also Caroline, for you for supporting the Kapla Sik, and uh, really it's it's actually been an amazing year for, for Kapla Sik, so we thank you very much for that. And um, as I was saying and interrupted myself earlier, is when I go to wine shows um, and you blind taste and you show people and, and you sort of compare, you have a champagne in the one glass and you have a Kapla Sik in the other glass, it's very often that people would um, say, oh, this has to be the champagne. So we just have to get people to try to drink it and we really, um, it's just an amazing value um, for money. The quality is amazing. And I think the price quality ratio, you can't get better. So please, everybody support the sick and, and spread the word. Um, we will still, not only today, but we will celebrate 50 years of Cup Classic and Carps of Funkel right until um, the end of the year. Um, yes. And, and if there's any questions, but cheers um, to 50 years of Cup Classic. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you very much, Lisa Marie, and happy birthday. Let's all toast to her. Long life. <laughs> and may you mature like her Cuvée Royale, right? Awesome. Thank you so, so happy much. Birthday. So there Thank you have you. it. Simon, Simon Spech, which is a mountain. I think the view of the mountain is this. And Kapsa Fonkel, which means the Cape Purple. I guess that was a way to really describe it in a way that people would remember and differentiate from the normal wine. I wonder, Lisa, do you have pressure, excuse me, since you've had the most heritage in history as a producer, is, is, that, is there pressure then to outperform whoever's new? Um, are you having to innovate every so often, perhaps being the pioneer in this field? Um, you know what, uh, uh, it is actually amazing is that everybody, of course, we, we uh, we want to sell each brand and that's important and, and um, we want everybody wants to do something different. But I have to say um, it's myself, somebody from uh, Pippa Carter from Boschendal, um, Kobe from Grandbeck. You know, we sit around a table and we realize that together the voices are much stronger. For us to get out that message about Cup the Sick, it's so difficult to do it alone. So we can't do it without the Cup the Sick Association. So Yes, there's, there's always pressure, but I think it is just the pressure of trying to, to bring out the best that we can produce as Simon Sikh. So Charles Skuman, he's the um, winemaker for Cup de Sikh and, uh, and our white wines. And of course, there's the spread of, you know, we want to produce the best. So that night on the 16th of September, when we're all sitting there, of course, you want to take the trophy away and you always want to do better. But together, we, we, we can't spread the word on our own. So yes, there's pressure to perform, but there's um, a bigger responsibility for us to get out the word and spread the word of Cup to Six through the association. Awesome. So you're the leader and you continue leading along the way. I was actually expecting Christine to send me part of the Demitech bottle just for the bottle beauty. <laughs> I've been waiting for them a long while. So Christine, you owe me because I wanted well, to show off. Yeah, yes, you'll, you'll get them before the end off. of the day. <laughs> I wanted to show off, but it's fine. I got the other two bottles. Something I also noticed about Simon's sick is most of your wine, um, where most of sparkling wines and MPCs are non-vintage, meaning they don't have the vintage based on the bottle. For Simon's sake, it seems that a lot of what's in the market is actually vintage. It always has the vintage date. Is that your trend or tradition, or is it just a coincidence? Because most people will focus on the year they feel was a good um, yeah, We definitely want to keep it vintage. Um, you know, uh, there, there is always a, a, a thing of trying to, you know, if you're non-vintage, I suppose when the volumes grow, it could be easier to, to do a non-vintage. Um, uh, you know, the other producers mustn't now, you know, <laughs> shoot me, but 
it's, it's not that it's easier to make a non-vintage. I, I think um, we've just decided that we really want to do vintage. So uh, we work with that vintage and gives it, uh, you know, work with what, what nature also gives us. And, um, and and I think they'd like the challenge. So it's just a decision. We've, we've always had vintage. And um, as, as far as we can, we will always have vintage on the bottle and make vintage um, cup classic. Thank you very much. There you have it. That's Simon Sick, the pioneers, the classics. And you've been given some important dates. And even who knew that the rosé had some pinotage in it? So it's actually quite interesting to notice all the different grips that are being used by the different companies, and it's even going to get more exciting. I'm so excited that we were the first to host a sort of cup classic event during the spectacular South Africa event last year. We did hold a cup classic virtual tasting. I think it was somewhere in the middle of September. In February, so in um, April this year, we actually did an in-person tasting in the coastal town of Mombasa. A lot of the samples that were sent into the market at the time are, of course, uh, brands that are not currently available in the market, but it was a really good showcase in terms of what was available there. We also had the importers who already are in the market. But what was great is in Mombasa, it's the perfect weather for Babli. It's always warmer. It's by the sea. There's the ocean. You're having your seafood, so it was quite a great event, and I look forward to having another event in the future somewhere in the coast as well. But wherever you are, there's always great time for Cap Classique. Now, one of those companies that actually had sent us samples in, uh, in April, I see, is Lawrence Ford, and I want to invite uh, the producer, Hans Nell, if you're on the call, please, if you could just say hello, tell us a bit about your company and specifically about your, MC, your Cup Classic portfolio as well. I think for that particular event, we had the Nectar. Um, the Nectar, it was a very nice bottle. Unfortunately, I don't have it here, but I hope you can speak to us and tell us about uh, that and whether now you do have an importer in the market as well. Over to you, Hans. Hi, everyone. Can, can you hear me? Yes, we can. And we can okay. see you too. Okay, great. I'm just getting the hold of the Zoom here. Um, so I have got the Nectar with me. Um, and in, in the spirit of celebrating the 50 years, I'm going to open a bottle now. I'm not going to surprise it. Otherwise, I might lose my office windows. <laughs> but um, yeah, cheers. Cheers to everybody on 50 years of Cap Classic. Um, so yeah, a little bit ab about uh, the wine. This is our, our nectar, our demi sec. It is a vintage uh, Cap Classic. Is the sound? Is there a problem with the sound? Are we all good? Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, so it's a vintage uh, Cap Classic. It's a 28 vintage. It's 100% Chardonnay. So beautiful wine, like some of the other producers mentioned, it's the biggest growing category at the moment. Um, and, and we see that as well. And we see lots of potential in, in the African market for it as well. Um, we do do um, also other Capital Six. Um, so I have here our, our Brut Blanc, which is a blend of Chardonnay, 15% Pinot Noir. It's also vintage age. We talk about aging um, in the bottle. So our, our nectar is aged for about 15 months and um, our Brut Blanc for about 50 months plus. Uh, we also do a, a rosé under the same label. So the rosé is uh, Pinot Noir, about 60%, 40% Chardonnay um, and aged for 30 months plus. And then we've got something really special which is called our cuvee. Um, it comes out with this beautiful um, medallion on, on the front. And this is small volumes, but um, this one is called cuvee 108 because it aged for 108 months in the bottle before we released it. And this is a, a Brut Zero. So that's, that's basically our, our portfolio. Um, Lawrence Ford is situated in, in Somerset West, um, close to Cape Town. Um, I wonder if I can get a screen share up here to tell you a little bit more about the estate. Um, I'll just give you the rights, please hold. I'll just give you co-host rights. 
You right. can go ahead now. Okay. Let's see if it works. Right. You able to see that? Uh, goodness. Um, you all able able to see the screen share? I can't see on my side though. Yes, we can see it. Okay, great. Uh, maybe 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 you just need to go to presentation view. Okay. Yeah, let me just find the stuff up here. Uh, um, and then we can just start it. Otherwise, we just go ahead as is. If you don't mind everything around it, sorry about this. Um, right, you can you can see all the pictures. Yes, we can. Okay, this great. Go ahead. Fine. We'll 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 go ahead with like that. Uh, right. So Lotus Fort is is in Somerset West. Um, there you can see on on screen close to Stellenbosch, close to Cape Town. Um, and our biggest advantage, we're about eight kilometers from the, the ocean um, called False Bay. Um, so we benefit of the cool sea breeze coming in from, from the Atlantic Ocean. We're surrounded by mountains. Um, so the cool sea breeze cool us down. We're about five to eight degrees cooler than the rest of the, the Stellenbosch region. So it's quite a unique pocket within the Stellenbosch region. Right. Um, you see the mountains. This is the heat map of the average temperatures in February. So you can see we are quite cooler on our side of, of the mountain due to the effect from, from the ocean. And that benefits us in producing wines with great acidity, lower pHs, and is really suitable for producing quality couple of six. Um, historic farm um, dating back to the 1700s. We planted our first vines in, in 2000 and produced Captain Signal for, for 14 years. It's quite a diverse farm with many things happening here, but uh, a big focus on, on our wines that we produce here. Um, so we have 4,000 hectare state. Um, but we only planted about the top 100 hectares under vine. So we could choose the best soils, best slopes, and the best microclimates to produce the best uh, quality of wines here, which is really our, our biggest advantage on, on the estate. So we, we spoiled for choice and, and size really does matter for us. So we can, we can do quite a, quite a lot on, on the estate we have. Um, Right, and it's, it's quite a modern winery. Um, we're working with gravity-based uh, winemaking and Kaplasik production is one of my biggest passions because it just, me as a winemaker, forced me to, um, to, to focus on the technical part of winemaking. And it's a, a great culmination of the art of winemaking and also the technical side of it coming together. So me as a scientist, but both as a scientist and a winemaker, um, it is my biggest challenge to produce great Capri 6. And um, it is, it's one of that unforgiving categories that there's no margin for error, but the satisfaction is enormous when you produce something special. And that's lastly, just, just a view of, of our winery as well. Um, yeah, so that's basically me. Um, is there, is there any questions? Thank you very much, Hans. Thank you so, so much for giving us that. I have been to Lawrence Ford um, on my way to, I think, was it Sheikh after that or something? But it's so great that with the virtual spaces, we are able to transport ourselves through the glass. Imagine how many places we've been to already. We've been to Franchip Cellar. We've already been to Simon's Peg. Now we are at Lawrence Ford. That bottle was very popular with the ladies because it's black and purple or something. I'm a big, yes. I'm a big, yes. I'm very visual. I mean, like I would just use that as a vase even after drinking it. Um, but then maybe for questions, I see there's one from Zanele about the Kube 108 being available in Kenya or even the Nectar. I think you have Boye, is it Wine Roots is your representative here? Violence um, Voyager. Yes. 
Yes. Yes, so sure it will be, I mean, if you request from them, they will be able to, to get either one, uh, one of the four brands we do have, um, but I'm sure the, the Nectar will, will be available there. So the Nectar is already in the market. Would you know the pricing? I actually should have checked this before myself. Would you know the pricing in Kenya? Maybe no, not, not in Kenya shillings, okay. no. I'm not, I'm not sure what the pricing is at the moment. Okay. But there you go, you could get it from Vineland Voyager. And did you make a special request for the 108, Vanilla? Maybe you can get it before Christmas. Actually, I hope from the people gathered here today that this Christmas, you'll give nothing but Kapia Seek. Or at least in whatever else you're giving, you have to make sure there's a bottle of Kapia Seek because it is so diverse. But as Hans, Hannes was talking, I'm wondering, about the ageability of wine and about this maturation. The original nine months, which has also changed, was like a human pregnancy. I like to visualize these things in my head, right? It's like a, you're doing a second fermentation for at least that nine months. I know a lot of the producers extend and go above and beyond. 108 is quite a long time. And then how long will this wine be able to age for? And perhaps how long can you keep it to drink it? Um, it's it's a very good question. Um, we found that that our wines age extremely well under under cork. So after this gorging, after the aging process, when we put the cork in, our wines and, and I think most most cup to six in 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 the category age really well. So I recently opened a, a, a twenty twelve, um, and the wine looked as as if it was disgorged yesterday. So. It is luckily um, one of the categories that does age really well uh, in, in the bottle. So the, getting back to the 108, um, it is 2008 vintage. Um, so it's, it's already 11 years old, but um, when you pour the wine, it's still got the integrity of the bubbles and also the color looks like a, like a young white wine. So. Um, and that's the beauty of it, that it can age that well and, and only get better uh, under, under the cork as well. You have it. Amazing, amazing, amazing. The, comp the more complex the wine is, the longer we can keep it. But then, of course, there are some styles that are more clued to uh, consumption, you know, while they're young. But uh, we look forward to that. Thank you very much, Hannes, for that talk about Lawrence Ford. And yes, please remember you can always cheers. You can always put your questions in the chat so we can have an interactive session. Now, today I really have a surprise for you because I actually didn't know he was going to join us. Um, I've said this before, like if anybody can learn about wine, if Wine Juro could learn about wine, anybody can. I'm from the slopes of Mount Kenya and that area is better known for what? For coffee and tea. It is not as beautiful as the winelands per se in terms of, you know, the vistas, but then there is that mountain that is imposing. And the mountain was originally called Mount Kirinyaga, but I know it's now called Kenya and we'll just flow with it. I started in wine in about 2004. And one of the first things I did was to sign up for a class at University of Cape Town. In that class, there was winemakers. So you can imagine how much pressure we were under. And one of those was Francois Joubert. He's here with us today. But a very special thing about Francois, I don't know whether I've told you this before, but maybe today is the day to say it. When you're in Cape Town, of course, you want to go to wine tours. And most of the time, you hardly get beyond the tasting room. If you're very lucky, you might get into um, the wine cellar and perhaps into the vineyard and get that personalized tour. But when I went to see, sorry, I just want to remove this spotlight. Okay, sorry. If I went, when I went to see um, Francois, I think at that time he was working at Tassara, you remind me. And it was a very rainy day. But I tell you, Francois took his time to take me through the winemaking process. He even took me into the cellar. We were drinking off the barrel. And knowing what I know now, I understand how special that particular uh, visit was for him to actually give me that kind of access. So I didn't know he was going to be here today. I just want him to talk to us. He currently works for Leliud. I think Leliud, uh, I've seen some bottles of Leliud brought in by Under the Influence. They 
they supply a lot of the lodges. Uh, but then over to you, Francois, please say hello to us and uh, tell us something more about Le Lieu. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here and to be hosted by you. Thank you so much. And we have come a long way, haven't we? <laughs> um, yeah, I can remember we did uh, the wine, the postgrad in wine business in the UCT was uh, absolutely wonderful, I must say. It's a great experience for all of us. Um, well, we've moved on. I'm now the head winemaker for Le Lude in France Hook. Um, we've got quite a unique product, very elegant, as you can see. Uh, we focus on simplicity because in that we find is the best elegance. So everything is very unique with our product. I'm going to try to put it a little bit closer so you guys can see it. Yes. <laughs> so this is our Le Lude 2012 vintage cuvee. It was on the lease for about, uh, now it's uh, roughly seven years and a couple of months, give or take. We focus a lot on um, the finesse of the product. So a lot of minerality is uh, one of the big components with acidity and linearity. Uh, our grapes we get from different areas of the vast South Africa, from the coastline to inland at Robertson, to also your more fruit growing areas such as France Hook with more loamy type soil structures. So I always refer to winemaking as having a palette of colors. And by getting all these different components in, you can make some exquisite cupcakes. And uh, I'm most very fortunate to be able to now work for Lelud and make these stunning cup de six for the Barrow family. Um, uh, I hope you guys know this, but the 2012 vintage scored the highest at the canter with 97 points in 2019, which is also making us the highest scoring cup de six producer in South Africa. So we're very, very proud of that one. Wow, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. And I'll have to make sure that Deanne gets me that particular bottle when, <laughs> when they're doing their next round. Um, I, I, I think I've seen the Lute has a different kind of closure. Typically, the closures are like this. But then there's the closure with the... There's something through the middle in some bottles. I don't know whether you have any to show us. I have. Awesome. I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Francois. It's just amazing how you how this virtual tasting reunites you with your classmates who you haven't seen for years. Um, it is wonderful, this isn't is, it? It's yes, it's very great. Awesome. Yes. Oh yeah, that kind of closure. Please talk to us about the difference between those and that one. So this is the old traditional method of uh, closing your cup. Well, actually, not cup to seat, but champagne. So this was way back when, uh, when they didn't have the crown cap to do the second fermentation. They used to close it with cork. So you would close the bottle with a cork closure before you start the second fermentation inside the bottle. Now this, this uh, clamp or staple is called a graph. Now we were the first ones in South Africa to actually bring that method back. Um, or reuse it in South Africa. And this is something quite unique because if you do the second fermentation on the cork, you actually get a lot of different characters from it. I would almost say more of a earth type character and also more, uh, more aged characters. So you're going to find some forest floor, you're going to find some oxidized marmalade type characters coming through, which uh, complements the cup classique extremely well. So we do a very limited amount of this type of fermentation and closure, closures, because um, it's a quite a unique product. And uh, um, and yeah, well, it's, it's really unique. So we don't produce a lot of it. And so very labor intensive, but something very unique. So the usual type of closure, I don't know, let me quickly show how it usually looks. Great, you got him working there, Jeroen. You got <laughs> Francois running around. 
For her, I'll do a lot. Uh, uh, I think she's a very great South African ambassador up there in Kenya. <laughs> so this is the usual cap that you will do your second fermentation on. And the inside of this cap is plastic. And so it's a very, it's an inert product. So you won't get any development of flavors except that what the winemaker put in there in the beginning. But when you put a natural type closure on it, now nature is also playing with you. And nature is also now going to create more flavors and textures inside your product, which is makes it a lot more expressive and complicated, but a beautiful, beautiful product. So that is a, that's everything in a nutshell. Basically. Oh, thank you so much, Francois. I look forward to visiting again. And this time when I'm in the when I'm doing the barrel tasting, I will really appreciate it. But then you made an impression back then, and it is such a good surprise to have you <laughs> on today. And thank you for what you've added in terms of that. So Lelut, again, from under the influence is available. I think they bring in limited quantities. Um, unfortunately, I also don't know the price. I was hoping Diane would have joined us by now, then we could get that information and share it with you. Thank you so much, Francois, and all the best. Did you, you know? Yeah. You are muted, Wanjiru. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Talking about 50 years. Did you know that uh, maybe maybe the alcohol is getting to my head now? I'm so sorry. I should drink some water, right? <laughs> Mia Wines owned by Kalika have a brand called Mara Wines. And usually they have the Maasai, Maasai what is it called? The Maasai beads along their bottles. And a lot of times people confuse it for a Kenyan brand. For Kenya's Independence Day in uh, 2013, they actually made an MCC that they called Mala, Mara Celebration to celebrate the 50 years of independence. So this is another idea for, say, producer, I mean, for retailers, for hotels and the trade is that you could actually private label MCC for special occasions or even for weddings. And perhaps that's another unexplored market where we can actually have, you know, one zero weds Jogona or something like that on the bottle or whatever brand, the Wine Zero brand, uh, celebrating 10 years of our business um, in 2024. Something like that could be really, really cool as well. And maybe an opportunity even for the producers, you know, to handle that. So we do have that Mara celebration. Unfortunately, we don't have one here, but then it's a 2013 vintage and it was specifically for Kenya's independence celebrations. Of course, we know Mara National Park um, is world famous. And actually right now for the South Africans, um, I wish you were here to watch the migration with the wildebeest moving from Kenya to Tanzania and come back. Um, so this happens between July and October and it's quite phenomenal. So the game lodges are really, really, really cool for that. Now, before we go on, I want to ask some questions to find out whether you're listening and you can answer on the chat. Since you're not asking questions, I'm going to ask them to you. How many members, current members, are in the Cap Classic Producers Association? Cap Classic Producers Association, Caroline told us there are how many members currently? Anybody was listening? A hundred. Very well done, Graham and Natasha. Very well done. You were listening. They started with very few members, but now there's over a hundred members. She said the second fermentation in bottle was changed this year. It used to be nine months was the legal minimum number of months that Cap Classic needs to be in second fermentation minimum. Ooh, 12 months, there you go. People are listening, people are listening. Okay. She gave us statistics about Africa. And she said she was quite surprised about the value, the average value per bottle. And she gave us a figure for the average value per bottle, which is the FOB price, the export price out of South Africa. How many rands was the average? Oh, Dimitri was listening. <laughs> yes, Dimitri Nixon. Oh, Nadia, you guys are really good. Uh, who else got the answer correct? Okay, Zanella was a few off, but you're still within range. 
and uh, Adero Achola, awesome. This is really great. Yeah, you guys are listening. I thought I would catch you on something. I would catch you on something. For Simon Seg Wine, which, which on their portfolio has some pinotage? From the Simon Seg Wine collection, which of the styles we discussed today has a bit of pinotage in it? Aha, the Blue Trose, you guys are really good. Maybe I should give a scholarship also instead of giving away bottles, yeah? Who wants to do the Wines and Spirits Education Trust course? Maybe, maybe we, can, we can actually see that. Okay, next one, I see you. And Shalene too. All right, all right. Okay, let me get back, let me get back. Um, also on this call, I want to introduce what Wines of South Africa does in Kenya and in the region as a whole is not just hold virtual tastings or come and give business to business opportunities to producers like we're doing now in terms of linking them to importers and posting their, their products in the market. A lot of what they do is also education. So since our partnership with them began in 2015, which was right after I finished the U University of Cape Town course, is that every year when they come to do a grand tasting, when you used to meet in person, there is also a virtual, I mean, there's also training for service people. And over that period, we have trained over a thousand people who work in restaurants, hotels, and the like. In February, we actually had our first training in Mombasa, right uh, before we did the Cup Classic um, event as well. So education is a big part. Over and above that, we also have the sommelier competition. So a sommelier is somebody who, of course, deals with wine. In Kenya, we use it very loosely, but in more of those mature markets, this person is like right, be, right behind the, the chief chef or something like that. We've had two competitions in Kenya. Uh, the first, I think, was 2016, and the second was in 2018. One of the winners, the winner actually in 2018 is Sam Disho, and I know he's on the call. Sam, he was driving earlier. Are you in a position to talk now, Sam? Uh, hi, 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 Molimu. Yes, I am. I was uh, okay. driving earlier, then I disappeared into a meeting, and then now I'm back. So, yes. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, Tell us what you like about Cap Classic as a category. I know you've traveled to South Africa for the competition where you were pitted against others in the world. You participated in the World Cup as the, actually you are the only, you are the Kenyan the East African representative at that. What's your favorite Cap Classic and what can you tell us that we don't already know? <laughs> well, uh, my favorite um, uh, Cap Classic, uh, and I think it's because it's, uh, one of the first cup classics I ever tested was uh, was the Spear Spear uh, MCC, and uh, I was uh, very lucky that during the time when I was uh, doing the Wasa Som Cup final, uh, we we had a cup classic evening, and uh, I got to test the Spear. I think it was 108 uh, months on the lease, and it was it was a fantastic. Uh, uh, fantastic experience is almost like uh, meeting the big brother of your favorite brand um, but yeah I think cup classics uh, especially for for me working in the Kenyan market um, they are they are awesome because uh, they are an easy easy introduction into 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 bubbles for for us uh, I think the price point is very attractive for this market as it's not as uh, as uh, mature as maybe the other markets that want the other bubbles and I think in terms of how they are made and how, of course, uh, uh, all the, the fruit in them makes them fantastic for, for the customers. I've never poured uh, an MCC for anyone who didn't, uh, who didn't enjoy it. And I think it's some good validation for, for the process. And I think now also my experience in the market is in as, uh, in as much as people used to, used, used to speaking about champagne, now they're actually realizing that MCC is the same quality, if not better in some instances, at, uh, at very affordable prices, which means you can, uh, you can drink more or enjoy more with your friends. So I think uh, um, and that is where I was like, uh, today I'm master 10. I'm, uh, I'm going, actually going to pick up my bottle of spear. I'll be picking it up in, in probably the next 10 minutes. 
Um, uh, so yeah, it's. I think it's as a, as a category, it is growing, and I'm um, I'm happy that uh, we get to have such events and discuss all this, and I'm glad to to be learning quite a bit uh, about from the producers about this uh, this fantastic drink. Thank you very much, Sam Disho, or should I call you Mr. Gucci? Because uh, I can see <laughs> I can see all the Gucci products in your car. Um, you yeah. actually are very good multitasker, and I'm glad you're not on two wheels today because normally he's on a motorbike. So the fact that he's in four wheels, I know he's in safe hands. So yes, men can multitask <laughs> apparently. <laughs> we, yeah? we try. We try once in a while. Okay. Thank you so much. Sam, and Thank congratulations, you. keep flying the flag high as we prepare. Maybe one of you who is in this meeting today will be the next familiar uh, champion. So we'll be giving you information on that, of course, within the circumstances of everything going on. Um, I do have some apologies from some of the people who were supposed to speak today. It seems there was a busy day and a lot of overlapping meetings, but I want to talk about Lomarin which is the Anthony Rupert, uh, rose, especially the rosé. This is brought in by under the influence. Under the influence typically um, have been working with a lot of the lodges. And uh, this uh, cup classic is also really good value. It's around just over the 2000 shilling um, mark. And I know, um, the particular Brut Classic Rosé was actually the winner in the category. You remember Cass, uh, Caroline mentioned the Cup Classic Challenge. So this won the Rosé category, the Brut Rosé, and it's available in Kenya. There's also just the Brut Blend also available. The two are really good as a pair. And coming to think about what sorts of things or what sorts of, uh, sorry, I'll just switch off the camera here. For Sam, awesome. One of the really great things about one of the really great things about Cap Classic is, of course, even the association. We think celebration, weddings. Did you know that during Barack Obama's inauguration, he actually selected an MCC to be served to his guests? It was not a champagne; it was an MCC. Who can tell me what brand that was for Barack Obama's? inauguration please type it in the chat see whether you know i know it's available in kenya and it is um from the wow beverages range and it's one of the very popular brands as well that comes in a lot portfolio but then lomarins for example also runs the is this apollo tournament matume will help me here or caroline there is the uh we all these things with race with horses really confuse me polo. so it's polo is this a polo tournament Matume? I'll leave that to Caroline. <laughs> Caroline, do you have any idea what the Lomarine, is this like a Lomarine cup or something that happened or used to happen? Would you know? I think we missed it. Anyway, you could Google it. Someone can Google it and tell us about it. But if you think polo, and I think I only discovered recently that polo is also a growing sport in Kenya. Um, the tournament held you know, on every odd weekend as well. Um, and uh, there is there's also, you know, like we said, wedding, celebrations, inaugurations. So this should be your place of choice and, you know, choosing this as well. So this is quite an approachable uh, rosé. Um, it, it's very fresh, it's very fruity in terms of strawberry flavors, cherry flavors as well. Um, and I think it, you know, it can be very suitable for any occasion. Again, Mother's Day, Valentine's Day, birthdays, you can never go wrong with Cap Classic. Even if you want that sort of manly um, aspect to it, there is brands that of course can get that like that one that we're going to be hearing from soon called The Green Man. Um, but um, I will be waiting for John Lobsher to join us because he was, I think, having a journalist lunch at his, at his establishment. And I'm also waiting for Spencer, who is a Kenyan expert to South Africa, who was one of the judges of the Cup Classic Challenge. Um, let me see who got the Graham Beck answer correct. Lovely. 
Lovely. So that was Graham Beck that was served during the Barack Obama's um, session as well. Any questions from the audience? I'm curious to hear what you'd like to know before I ask you more questions. And I hope you're posting and are tagging the Kapia Stick Association at WOSA, at Wainjiro, drink Kapia Stick to be part of the global conversation. Yeah. Oh, I'm told by Zanelle that the South African national polo team is coming to Kenya this September. Guess who's going to be supplying cup plastic for that occasion? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Maria Kipkemo is asking, are there going to be limited edition bottles for this 50th celebration? Maybe one of the producers can answer that for us. Are the producers producing a limited edition special for to celebrate this year? Matume, would you know? So, sorry, Anjira, I didn't catch that. Can you repeat that? There's a question in the chat whether there's going to be limited edition bottles produced to celebrate this 50th year. Mm, do you sure. know of any plans? I am going to uh, reach out to Caroline to give us the answer to that. So she would like to <laughs> have that information. <laughs> But that would be a nice challenge to pose on to the Kapla Seeker Producer Association to say what is it that's you know being worked on to to commemorate this this particular achievement. I think it's a milestone of note. So yeah, let's hear what Carolyn's got to say. She may not respond immediately, but I'm sure she'll come back to us on that one. Okay. I want to find out from the wine producers, um, there was snow in Cape Town this weekend. I mean, we had photographs from across the board and we know that in South Africa, harvesting happens during January to March. So this is really sort of part of the winter season, but uh, is there any effect that you expect from that cold front or not? Hans or uh, Francois or Lisa Marie? <laughs> no? Hi, can I answer? <laughs> Please, yes, go ahead. Thank uh, you. Yeah, so we had quite a lot of snow, which is normal for this time of year. So it won't really affect the, the harvest. Uh, the, the season is a bit later this year, so vineyards are just starting to bud. Um, I wasn't here this weekend, but apparently there was a lot of hail in our region. Um, that could affect if you have small buds, uh, small leaves on the, on the vines, that could damage it. But luckily, uh, because we're in a cooler region on our side, um, the vineyards didn't start budding yet. So no effect. The cool weather is still good for us. Um, it's normal for this time of year, actually. So, so yeah. Awesome. Well, it makes for beautiful pictures as well, although I don't want the cold, but it was quite interesting to see the snow covered mountains and all. There's another question from Irene. Why is it now referred to as Cap Classic and not Method Cap Classic as before? Why was this change? Wanjiro, that's my question. Um, so, the association has, has taken a stand on um, referring to Cap Classic, the product, as Cap Classic. And the reason for that was just there were so many different names floating around. Um, MCC, Method Cap Classic, Sparkling Wine, Cap Classic, that we've just decided that we want to try and unify everyone to say the same thing. And the big challenge comes in when um, consumers don't know what they should be searching for. So some shops are, are calling it MCC and some shops are calling it Capricic and some Method Capricic. So you actually get a quite a fragmented view of, of, the, of the category. So we've just, um, as the association and as our members have, have taken quite a strict stand with, please refer to the, the products as Capricic. The process by which is made is still called Method Capricic. 
um, as it is in champagne, you know, method champenoise. You don't see any champagne bottles with method champenoise um, referring to it as that rather than champagne. So we thought this is probably a, a, a great way to clear up any confusion. Um, yes, it's going to be a long road. Uh, <laughs> I try to correct everyone as we go. Um, that's sort of I'm a bit of a policeman there. But, um, but, that's, but that's really why it is. It's just so that we can all speak a unified message. Awesome. There you have it. Um, I'm sure some labeling still has MCC for now. But that's why I guess even the cup plastic campaign is very, very important. Thank you for that. Thank you so much for that. Caroline, there was another question before about whether there would be limited edition bottles for this year from the different producers. Any um, ideas on that? It's actually something that has come up um, from a few, a few producers and, and a few of the members. Uh, at one stage, we did look at doing a six pack. So it would be six commemorative bottles in a wooden box. And we, uh, to be honest, um, we've been so busy with all the other initiatives that one went on to the back burner. But if there is an interest, then absolutely it's something that we can look at doing. We, it, I think it would be fantastic and um, something a nice keepsake for the years to come as well. I think, awesome. I think when Thank you. you. When, when you will challenge Caroline to say, in light of us as the industry and collective with the importers and all other stakeholders that we've already, you know, started to roll out the celebration of the Cup Classic in Mombasa, would be nice to have one big bottle that is branded Cup Classic that we can actually share with the consumers. Something to think and take up with the association, please. And I think something we need to speak to Lisa Marie about, because it would be great if that bottle um, or that juice could be Simon Sikh considering they're the ones who started it all. So maybe there's a, like an eight liter or something on the cards in the future. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, so the Kenyans or the East Africans are challenging the producers to do something. I see our next producer is now on the call and I'd like to introduce John Lobsher. Now, a lot of you may like mythical creatures and fantasy things and that, if you do, you're going to enjoy this conversation. I think um, that I had their first MCC from Sierra Baga and Wine here in Kenya, and it was called the Genie. And I was really surprised that it was 100% Shiraz. That was so, so crazy. Now, that restaurant imports specific batches for their own, for their own use within the restaurant. But we're glad now that there's an importer who is actually going to be bringing in the Silverstone MCC. A fun fact I learned that I didn't know before was that Silverthorne Estate specializes in Cap Classic and nothing more. Um, most of the other producers, of course, have a bigger portfolio of other wines, but in Silverthorne, it is Cap Classic and nothing else. I have their green man here, which I haven't quite opened yet because I'm looking forward to <laughs> the special, special occasion. Today is special, but I think I need more special, special. And um, I did get a chance to meet John. I don't know whether he remembers. Um, there was a, there's a, is this Cape Wine, the CWG auction that was usually used to be held in October, um, where wines made for auction, of course, are very special wines and they're very specific. And I think I got to attend in either 20, I think it was 2019. You don't always get to travel at the time when things are happening, but in that particular one, I got to meet him and some other greats that I've been following along. Um, so today he's here with us and his products are coming to Kenya. So I want to hand over to John to take us through. And I hope your luncheon was successful. We've been waiting for you as you're finishing your special luncheon today. Welcome, John. Thank you very much. My sincere apologies. We we. We're celebrating Cutler Sick Day, and we've got a whole group of media, and it's, you know, it's a lot of fun. But it's so nice to be able, we're incredibly excited to have our wines going to Kenya. Um, it's really, it's, it's wonderful to have South African products going up into the rest of Africa. And uh, as you said, we are 100% Cutler Sick producers. 
that's all we do. We do four different uh, cup classics. So we do a, a, a column bar called River Dragon, and we do a special blend called Jewel Box, and we do a rose, which you tasted, called the Genie. But today, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the Green Man. Um, the Green Man is a Blanc de Blanc. So when you in France, in Champagne, and you produce a Blanc de Blanc, it's 100% Chardonnay. So that's what we've got is a Cup Classic, which is 100%, and we've called it the Green Man. And the Green Man is actually, you can see uh, the little face of the Green Man over there. The Green Man is the, is an, is the spirit of the forest and uh, dates back mythological. So this is like pre-Christianity in the ancient forests in Europe. Um, they, they just believe there was the spirit of the forest or in South Africa, I always joke and I call it the tokolosh of the forest, which is quite interesting. But the spirit of the forest was what created the life and death of trees when trees went from autumn to summer and, and vineyards are similar because in winter they are dormant and they are dead uh, like they are currently now. As you said, we've had a very cold winter and I've just, I, I was in the vineyards this morning and I can slowly see, slowly beginning to bud. So within the next, I'd say within the next week, the Chardonnay will start budding because it has been so cold, it's quite late. But yeah, so Green Man, pure Chardonnay, it's going to be arriving in Kenya. It's going to be so exciting to have the Green Man let loose in Nairobi. We, we're looking forward to it. <laughs> Thank you so much. We're looking forward to it as well. Why mythical creatures and why do you have this fantasy thing? The genie, the, is it the, the, big, the river dragon the, the, the and the like, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Tell, tell us a bit more about those names and sort of your philosophy around it. And why, why even use Shiraz to make MCC? In for, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, so number one, why do we... So we do use the pure champagne varieties. So our prestige cuvee, which is called Jewel Box, is made from uh, Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. And the Green Man is pure champagne, Chardonnay, so the, the Blanc de Blanc. But because we in South Africa, we're not in Champagne, so we're not governed by the protocols of having to use either Chardonnay or Pinot Noir or Manure. So we've decided to be creative. And uh, I mean, if you go anywhere in Southern France, you'll have the most delicious Rosés made from Shiraz, and I'm thinking about, well, I'm talking about still wines. And I just knew if we took Shiraz and treated it 100% like a, a, a cut classic, so whole bunch harvest, whole bunch pressed, low extraction, there's no ways that we wouldn't be able to make a delicious sparkling rosé. So we experimented and it's, it worked extremely well. And I mean, I, I get excited when producers in South Africa make Cap Classic from Chenin Blanc or Columbar or Shiraz and just use different varieties because we also need individuality. We are sparkling wines from the Cape and therefore we can, we can push the envelope. You've also used Columbar for one of your wines? Yeah. Yeah. Tell us a bit more about that too. That's a white grape. You don't quite hear about it, about it a lot. Yeah, so what is interesting in South Africa, the most widely planted variety, number one, is Chenin Blanc. Number two is Columbar. And the reason why Columbar is so widely planted, it is used for brandy. So Columbar is a cognac variety. And uh, in Robertson, we have uh, very good conditions for producing high volume columbar for the brandy production. And we have a 38 year old block of columbar. It's ancient, it's all gnarly and old. And I thought we cut classic specialists, we should make a 
a delicious columbar coupler sick out of a, a, this sort of uh, unknown variety. And we experimented, it's been barrel fermented in acacia barrels. So not French oak, not American oak, but acacia barrels, so, which is very different. And it fits in with why we called Silverthorn. So you can see behind me, that's why we called Silverthorn, the acacia karoo, so the African tree. And we wanted our, our property to have a connection to Africa and using acacia barrels with columbar was just something, yeah, it's a, a bit different and it's delicious. I had never thought the silver thorn was um, the, the acacia, which is also very prevalent in, in Kenya. There's all sorts of acacia. Yeah. So that's really, really cool um, information. So there you have it, there's the green man, uh, which I think about my father, he's, he's a green thumb. Unfortunately, he doesn't drink alcohol, but if I was to give him a gift, this would make a perfect gift for him. I think about the genie I'm in and wanting magic to happen. I think about the river dragon, I don't know, all those Game of Thrones fans and uh, all the fantasy and everything, I guess Silverthorn is your thing. Um, Graham and Natasha, how much will this be on sale for when it arrives? Unless you're lucky to have a complimentary like I do, <laughs> how much will this be selling for and how can people get the wine? Are you taking pre-orders? I see some interest in the chat. So free orders? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, uh, the, the shipment left Cape Town on Monday morning. The ship sailed on the way to Durban and then to Maputo and Dar and finally Mombasa. So it should be arriving here at uh, end of September. And then depending on KRA, we, we, we're hoping that by the first week in October, then we should have our hands on the product. So we have the, the Genie, the Green Man, and some of the Jewel Box coming. And John, I just love those words of seeing the Green Man loose in Nairobi. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> there you go. The retailers, the trade people, you got to have this. So you better get your pre-orders in before um, everything goes out. Coincidentally, so when some was, when some was, Sorry, yes. So you're just asking about the retail price. So we're, yes. we're, we're hoping that we should be able to get a recommended retail price of between three seven and five thousand. Three seven for the genie, um, about three nine for the green man, and about five k for the jewel box. Um, jewel box. John was sold out of the river dragon, which we would have had as an entry level um, MCC. So we'll, as soon as you release some of that next year, then we'll we'll book some and you stick it in a safe room for us. Yeah, but that's yeah great. I will. <laughs> awesome, awesome. And for those who may be able to get their hands on the auction wine, I think it was called the Big Dog or something like that. Big Dog. Maybe that's another possibility as well. You hear that MCC, sorry, sorry, Caroline. Cup Classic Cup can be... <laughs> Top plastic can be can age very well. So yeah, you you find I should be fine for every time I say that word so that I can be careful not Aha, to say. we'll find you a good bottle of bubbly one, Jiro. <laughs> sure. So there's an opportunity to of course have those even for investment or for your collection in your cellar for years to come. But thank you so much, John. That was very, very interesting as well. So we are almost wrapping up. You're coming to the turn of the hour, but then I asked who would like to speak. So I want to give Maria an opportunity to say something um, to, to the meeting. For the others, I may call upon you cold call uh, before we get onto the quiz. And Maria Kipkemoi. Hi everyone. I just like to thank Wanjiru for everything. Uh, happy spring, happy new month, happy um, everything. I cannot wait for the green man in Nairobi. I don't know if everyone is excited as I am, but 
let's all thank Wanjiru for having us open a bubble, bubbly, on a Wednesday afternoon. Thank you so much. I just wanted to say thank you for all the, everyone who's been here. We, I really appreciate it. I have learned a lot that I thought I knew and I love such uh, experiences while having a bubbly. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much. I know I got asked why I chose, we chose that time frame, but then again, there's a mix of it's education, but it also, this is work for many people. A lot of us are in the industry as media or in the commercial side of the business. So this is not us having fun, this is actually work. So you're most welcome. Don't forget Pinotage is coming on the 15th of October. So we'll have kind of a long break, but hopefully we can get a lot more uh, promotions going on for Cap Classic in this month. You had the polo people are coming. Um, there could be branches or other, you know, uh, ideas for what we can do. And a lot of the producers and importers are having specials also on Cap Classic. So watch our pages, follow them. You've had their names. Be sure to get something before. And there's a lot of award winners here as well. I see Spencer is here. Spencer, uh, if you attended the, Cap, uh, the Cabernet Sauvignon event last month, you, you would have met him. He was representing Warwick. He's a new importer in the market, but more so as a chairman of Sommelier Association of South Africa and uh, an ASI, which is a French acronym for the sort of World Sommelier Association. He, 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 he's very credible in this field and is a Kenyan export to that market. But over and above that, especially for Cap Classic, he's one of the judges in the Cap Classic challenge. If you follow me on Instagram, we did an IG live that the video is on up on there that we used for marketing this event as well. And he talked a bit about it, but perhaps he could tell us what was exciting this year without giving us the results. We'd have to kick Caroline out of the meeting for you to give us the results. But if you can just share perhaps what stands out for you and this as a category. The other thing is you're a restauranter. So why aren't we selling more cafe stick in restaurants and having them on listing? Over to you, Spencer. Hello, hello, hello. How are you? And thank you so much for having me. Um, it's, it's really awesome to be part of the second one of these. And I think it's, it's um, yeah, it's just really great to be part of this. Um, thank you also for the introduction again. Um, I don't actually know, to be honest. So I, I can't, I don't, because well, the results come out on the 15th. So I actually have no idea who did well with what. Um, and I am, I am anticipating with, <laughs> with bated breath like the rest of us. But um, it was very cool this year. This year was is 50 years of Kafka Sikam, as of course you've said already. And it was the biggest entry at the Cap Classic Challenge, which, which is awesome. So more, more entries than ever before. And I think it was my third or fourth time judging it. And this was the first time, because this will always happen. Two things always happen in this competition, which is it's, a, it's always pretty technical because you've got the different types of bubblies, the Brut, Blanc de Blanc, um, sec, which is the new category, which covers sweet wines. And then you always have wines in the wrong competition. So you have a line of, of, of clear wines and one red one, that, or one pink one that's been entered into the wrong one. And so I think now after many years of trying this time, it didn't happen once. So all the wines were entered correctly, which means that everyone's beginning to get it, which is fantastic. Uh, and then from a quality level, there was zero. I mean, literally zero faulty, well, traditional faulty wines. Which is, which is great. So I think also from a, a bigger entry than ever before, it's awesome that, again, standard-wise, things are, things are going very, very well. Um, exciting? Very exciting. Uh, quality, quality levels across the board is up. And you know, it, was, it was one of the most challenging ones because you're really choosing between good and better. Your space and scorings were quite, were quite narrow because um, pretty much everything was, was of very high level quality. Um, and I think we, we picked out a top five uh, eventually, and of the top five, each category was, was, was um, represented, but on merit, because obviously each category gets its own trophy. And what's happened in the past is like you couldn't fish out um, something in the rosé, for example, not saying this is the case, but um, something in the rosé category, 
didn't um it was the highest scoring one but it wasn't it didn't score high enough to be over 90 points but this year all five of the ones you picked out were plus 90 um which was great it was really great so i think that speaks a lot for the standard um so lots of lots of good things to come i think and i'm not sure i'm sorry i did tune in a bit late but i don't know if if you if you said so forgive me if i'm repeating myself but um coming soon the minimum requirement for south african capital seek for our method champenois is going to be 12 months instead of nine months which is going to be phenomenal i think that's that's yeah it's really cool and i think that leads to answering your second question i why don't we drink more mcc again i don't know man i don't know the answers hey uh i think i, I wish we did and i think I, I yeah i wish more of us did look the champagne as a brand is monstrous isn't it like it's 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 such a huge it's it's such a juggernaut and you were all just eating off the crumbs that's left off the cake because it's so big you know anyone who's celebrating anything in the world is your first thing is heck they even call it champagne um and i think if you saw the fallout with the champagne with russia when they changed the name when they the law changed and didn't allow them to use that you see just the impact of the of that as a brand so um it's it's difficult to to and probably incorrect to try and say we want to compete with champagne because it's a real proper david versus goliath thing i mean i'm i'm pretty sure the budget of one of the big champagne houses <laughs> blows away the budget of the entire captain seek association so it's not a level playing field let's let's start there but um what's important and i think what we can do very well especially now 50 plus years of doing it is that we have a unique product that we're selling um and not just from a quality perspective but also we have a unique product that's minimum standard is at par and in some cases better than the best in the world and and that's a huge deal and that's the sort of stuff that we need to be telling those are the stories that we need to be saying that inside this bottle is a real proper certified qualified quality product um you know that's at a minimum of 9 months currently 9 months in the lease that secondary fermentation has taken place in the bottle that's a lot to say i mean that's it's different from prosecco different from a lot of other things and then you put the currency discount that you naturally get when you're dealing with south african products and you're getting a bargain i mean you're absolutely getting a steal for what you're paying for and that's i suppose the message that that more people need to have uh and i i would say anecdotally but I my experience with wine and a lot of people have tasted South African wine and gone oh I don't like South African wine for whatever pick any one of different reasons I don't know I've never met anyone who's had South African sparkling wine or MCC or Cap Classique and had it once and said I don't like this it's not it's not great um I it gives me gives me a headache or any of those ridiculous things that people say and it's it's one of those things like if you if you do it once you generally you'll generally want to do it again I reckon um so yeah let's 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 all be ambassadors and let's let's uh, as much as we can let's all let's all pop a glass pop a glass of mcc today and sell as much as we can awesome thank you so much thank you so much for that matume yes i had my hand up and i wanted to ask this question earlier and while spencer is in motion and and heat it up just a question on ageability what do you look out for when you just for a learning perspective and in cup classic ageability and carolan can answer this too or make an input um i'm having a 2015 you know brut rosé um and one thing about cup classic is that at least it can age in bottle how far back can go just from a learning perspective in brief thanks spencer and carolan yeah. can answer too I'm I'm happy to go after Caroline if change of voice. I'm happy to go after go you, first. Spencer. <laughs> you, you go first. I've had a lot of screen time here. <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks, Caroline. Cool, thanks. Uh well, I'm going to I think the first thing, you know, the uh, important thing about assessing bubbly is that the bubble amplifies things a heck of a lot more and it, it almost magnifies things to a point that you wouldn't get in a still wine. So from the beginning by the time you're opening a bottle of of South African Capital Seek that things already been 9 months in bottle and depending on how it's been made it may have been made it may have been barrel aged um and the base wines would have been aged for a point as well so let's first start with the fact that it's already an aged product um by the time you're drinking even the youngest one and in order to get to that point 
and still tastes nice. There's a lot of quality things that, that have worked and that are working or that are a work in progress. Um, I think very technically, from an ageability perspective, dosage is quite important. Um, how much has been added to it and, and how that, that'll balance because in the natural progression of how this wine has been made, the one element that is alien to it or the newest addition to it is the dosage. And, and that's something that I'd say is, is you, you need to be quite wary of. So if you've got, or you feel like the dosage is slightly imbalanced, that'll probably impact as the wine gets older um, and start to fall apart a bit. But it, um, that's, that's, I suppose, you, you have to be able to, to determine what impact dosage is having. But otherwise, then from just more, more, more um, layman's perspective, I think your ageability indicators are the same as any other white wines, um, which is freshness. You're looking that the fruit is still showing nice and fresh. If the fruit is beginning to tire, then you probably don't have a long time left on it. And as I said, the bubble will magnify that. So you will taste that unfreshness a lot, a lot um, clearer. And, and then again, the final thing I think is balance. And this is just like when assessing a still wine, if you feel anything is more, if the sugar seems to be out of balance or the acidity seems more prominent, that's not gonna get better with age. So if it's already at that point now, over time, it's probably not gonna, it's not gonna, it's not gonna get much better. So yeah, freshness is, is your key and then freshness and balance, I would say. Thanks, Spencer. Caroline, any input? Um, you know, Matumi, I've never ever been able to keep Cap Classique long enough at home to <laughs> comment sensibly on this particular question. <laughs> but I've been told by those lucky people who have cellars um, where they age their wines um, that Cap Classique is, is really something fantastic um, to age. Um, I've been lucky enough to, to drink some um, older wines uh, from our member producers and that. And I must say, I'm very partial to a Cap Classique with a bit of bottle age on it. I find that it does, um, those sort of beautiful yeasty, biscuity um, tones tend to overshine the fresh fruit, which is, I think is what Spencer was, was saying earlier. Um, and you tend to get something that's, you know, a little bit more golden in color um, and those sort of secondary notes come out. So it really just depends on what you enjoy. If you enjoy drinking youthful, very fruity, very sort of exuberant, um, sparkly Cap Classique, then probably a younger one would be better for you. But if you are the person that has a bit of patience and a bit of time and you, you can appreciate those secondary flavors, then I would definitely say keeping a few bottles for a little bit back would be would be very much worth it. Um, we should ask Lisa Marie, I'm, I'm not sure if she's still here, um, what's the oldest Cap Classique she's ever had? Because I know that Simon Sok have an incredible Vinatec uh, where they hold back lots of different vintages um, and release it yearly in a sort of a vintage day. And it would be very interesting to know um, her thoughts on the matter. If she's, I'm not sure if she's still here. I was going to say then the next move would be to Lisa Marie to ask what you know, it's the oldest that she's still cut in a, in a cellar, if there's any. That dates back to 50 years? I don't know. Pushing my luck here. <laughs> Lisa Marie, are you still connected? Doesn't seem so. so but, uh, Doesn't we'll, seem so. We'll, yeah, yeah, we'll check with her at some point. A question from Irene Gumbo. What's the best serving temperature for Cap Classic? Spencer? Sorry, I was on mute. Didn't catch that. Um, I, um, I, it's, um, I you, okay, okay, so no, serving I, I temperature, didn't... especially because you examine people on this and you give people exams during your sommelier <laughs> competition. <laughs> no, no pressure, eh? Um, so I, ideally, 10 to 12 degrees, I would think. Um, some people say eight. I think eight's a little bit too cold. And when it's when it's much colder, you, you're going to miss out on the more delicate aromatics and get a little bit more on the acidic, acidic um, the more acidic profile on it. So 10, 10 to 12 works very well for me. Um, and yeah, slightly warmer depends. And in, in, with, older, with older bubblies, slightly warmer is a bit better. Um, just cottoning on to what Caroline is saying, just when you're looking at more secondary and autolytic characters, those also get drowned out by temperature. 
quite often. So you know, slightly warmer, maybe go up to about 13 or 14 odd, which would be your kind of European room temperature um, for your much older, much older um, examples. But your fresh crisp, nice and young, eight to 10, oh, sorry, 10 to 12. So very, very well chilled because that also helps with the inertness of the bottle, yeah? When you're opening um, any of these bottles, you can actually feel the pressure coming out. And I think the colder, the better it is for everyone. What about glassware? Are we still doing the flute tulips or have we moved back to the, um, what are those called? The sort of dessert bowls. Any of the experts? The panelists can answer, or yeah, we can saucer. start with Spencer. The the saucer, um, the champagne saucer is is the um, the old one. That's a really cool thing. I actually just did a session on that for the sommeliers on on champagne um, service. And again, this tells you the about the power of the brand of champagne. There are three different types of glasses that you drink the same product out of, which is quite crazy to think about. I see you got a got a bit of a hybrid fruit there. It's cool. That actually, I mean, that's that's more or less a tulip. It's not as elaborate, but um, personally, I think the tulip is, is is the best is the meeting of the worlds as best. The flute is traditionally what's best known, um, and the, the flute is the flute is very ineffective because it doesn't allow the bubble to have its its um, its natural progression. And generally you'll find that you've got a, quite a frothy mousse because the bubbles are literally just exploding at the top. They're being funneled and they have nowhere to go. Um, the sauce is the best for that because that allows the bubble to have a natural progression, almost like a firework. So it comes out the bottom and, and very gently opens up on the top. But the tulip is, is the, the um, meeting of the two worlds because you've got a very wide rim in the middle, which will allow the bubble to have that progression and you still have that elegant funnel coming around the top and you probably spill less out of a tulip than out of a saucer. So um, I, I think, yeah, tulip would be my vote. Okay. Any other views from the others? Simon Spick, Lisa Marie, John, uh, Hans, any comments on the glassware? How best to drink what you make? Does it matter? Okay, maybe they're not on the call anymore. All right, are you ready for your quiz now? Before I take the last few comments from all the members. Oh, Maria is using the Gatsby type, which must be the what? The saucer, right? <laughs> I don't know what anybody else is using. Um, we saw a video of your tasting and you were using actually the normal glasses during the competition. You were, Spencer, you were using the normal sort of white wine glasses during the competition. You were not yes. even using any of this, yeah. Yeah, well, probably because you need like thousands of the of the, <laughs> of the sources, right? Um, but no, we use normal Riedel white wine glasses, which which okay. give you a very similar effect to the to the tulip. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, as long as the bottle is open, you can use whatever glass you want to drink it in. Now I know we are five minutes over a closing time. I just want to indulge this for a few more. Are you okay with that? With your permission? I don't want to go. This is so interesting. I don't want to leave. <laughs> I want to continue and invite you all for an after party somewhere. But um, just maybe in closing for Spencer, how does one become a judge? Because, or how do I get to be able to taste 100 wines in one day and still give a very objective view? Earlier, we had my former classmate, um, Francois. We were both in the UCT class. And part of what we did in that course was we went through... Um, I forget his name now. Michael Fridgen. The judge, yeah, Michael, ooh, Michael Fridgen with the big hair. We did a judging sort of academy. And on that day, we tasted 100 wines. I can tell you I wanted to quit drinking <laughs> at lunchtime. And then I, and, and we went for dinner in a fancy place after that. But I couldn't have any more wine like for the rest of the week because I was overwhelmed. So how do you become a judge that's able to evaluate and give an objective view. Um, well, it's quite honestly, actually, I, I did a similar, I did the, the, the Wine Judging Academy as well, a couple of, but not as the Academy, which was pretty much the same thing, but over three days, that was my introduction to it, which I suppose um, kind of similar to yours. 
Um, and then it's, to be honest, it's practice more than anything else, that the more you do it, the better you become at it. And don't drink it, I think, is probably the first and most important rule. I, I learned the very hard way. Don't, don't, don't drink. Um, then, and spit, and, and um, yeah, man, I wish I could give you a more interesting answer than that, but literally that's it. Uh, it's, it's practice. It's, it's just do it. The more, the more you do it, the better you, you become at it. And um, I've been quite fortunate to, to be on very many different panels in different times, and then you, you just get this, you, I suppose, start learning what you're looking for as well, which makes it a lot easier. Sorry about the background noise, renovation. Um, but you learn, you learn what you're looking for, which makes it easier because it's a very different process than when you're drinking for pleasure. Um, and it's not about, oh, that tasted good. It's really about, mm, why did that taste good? Um, will this continue to taste good? Does it have enough in it that's going to make in a year's time still going to taste good? Um, and, and, and then writing your notes and, and learning to score based on that. Um, so, yeah. Not, not the greatest answer, sorry, <laughs> but yeah. No, no, I mean, it's, it's as simple as practice, practice, practice. And um, I guess, you know, develop this way of, yeah. I have the same problem while I'm teaching. On teaching hmm. days, I have to be so careful. And of course, we can't necessarily spit in class now because of, you know, the COVID environment. But uh, yes, you, you have to train yourself to really just have a tasting potion. Thank you very much, Spencer. Thank you for that. And thank you for all the questions. Um, before we come up with the, okay, so there's a question for Spencer, I'm sure he'll answer that in the chat about events coming up. Um, I want to do a quiz before now I open for closing remarks for the end of the session. So are you all ready for the quiz now? Are you ready? <laughs> Nobody's saying anything, okay. <laughs> just shoot, just shoot, Winjiru. I'm sure okay, awesome. Will. Go, go. Right, so I'm, going to, I'm going to launch it and you can just, it's multiple choice. So I'm just going to launch it and watch the answers as they come along. So you should have a screen on your, I mean, you should have a pop-up on your screen that says CAP Classic Quiz. And you can answer the questions. I hope it only gives you one choice at a time. Um, and then we'll watch how the answers come on as you go along. Yeah, but then I noticed there's a lot of people in the call ranging from importers, enthusiasts, retailers, the media, and maybe we can get a few comments after we are done with the quiz. Um, are you being able to see the questions? I'm not getting any. Yes, we are answering. Okay, you answer. Okay, all right. I don't know why it's not showing on my side in terms of the feedback that's coming through. I can I can see the questions. Okay, super. All righty. Okay. I'll when go to the... Just, just want to... I, I, I'm not, I'm just want to answer to see what's going on here, but I, I can't click on anything. I don't know if it's because I'm a host, maybe. Okay, yes. You, you are... So I have to disable. Yeah, I have to disable you as host. Sorry. <laughs> Now, Matomi, uh, you and me, we're not supposed to answer. You should not. I know. <laughs> but know the the answer. <laughs> okay. That's for the fun of it. They don't know. They they don't they don't know the um. They don't know the answers because I did this on my own. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should know the answers, right? <laughs> you bet. You better know the answers. Sorry, who else do I need to disable? Okay, I'm I'm seeing answers coming in now. I think there was a delay on my side. Just to get the understanding and see whether maybe there's something we need to reinforce or which wasn't clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I tried to make them difficult, but clearly it is to make them more difficult than they were. Okay. Withdraw. Did you withdraw me? Uh, I can't, I don't know whether, I, I don't think I'm able to actually. I'm in, I'm in. <laughs> okay, are people done? Let me see how many, let me see the statistics. 
we have five out of 31 participants. Is it that bad? Or are my numbers, or am I getting a delayed reaction? They should be at least, you know, 20 participants or so. If say the producers are gonna be kind and not participate. <laughs> Right? right and then and then if you're from uganda or tanzania could you please place that in the chat for me uganda or tanzania i had printed out the report but the names seem all different now so if you're from uganda or tanzania and you joined in the call please let me know in the chat as well okay so i have 11 out of 31 who have finished too easy right too easy <laughs> and I hope some has stopped driving. <laughs> yes, yes, I have. We don't want you driving and doing your test, no. <laughs> uh, but maybe, maybe in my defense, I should say I'm, I was driving and doing the tests. Okay, no problem. <laughs> I must warn you, there's a champion among us. She tops everything she attends. So if Adero is still on the call and she's doing this, she'll probably come out top. <laughs> Adero, are you on the call? I think she dropped I'm off at some point. Call, I'm on the call, Wanjiro. However, when it comes to coming up top, <laughs> it remains to be seen. Okay, well, I. I I always put Adero on the spot, but I'm just so proud of her because in both the level one and level two of the Wine Street and Education Trust courses, she's been top and she's broken the record. She got 100% in one and 98 in the other. So of course that validates me as a teacher that we are producing the cream of the crop um, for even international courses, but she's just so diligent, even though she's not quite working in the wine industry right now. And then even in the, oh yeah, we did an online course for the South African wine course this year and she was still among the top three. So I like putting her on the spot for that. What were you drinking today, Adero? Today I was having the Graham back. Tell us about it for a bit, two minutes, while the other people finish the, yes. It's lovely. I've had it before. This is not my first time. So when we we're doing Cap Classic today, I was like, hmm, let me go back to that Graham back and get it. It's really, it's really a lovely wine. You know, it's got really fresh fruits, uh, apple fruit notes, but then it's also got that, um, those secondary flavors that you really love to enjoy in your, your traditional method uh, sparkling wines. And it's very elegant, but also very yes. approachable. The price of, uh, it's, it's around 2000 Bob. Okay, uh, 2000 shillings, yeah. around $20, okay. Yeah, so for that elegance and that approachability, you can't go wrong. Awesome. Thank you very much, Adero. And she's the one to beat. If you come for any of the courses, her record is the one to beat. What we do with the Wines and Spirits Education Trust, the top in the year get a very special gift from you know, a top producer. Um, some people got signed bottles of V from We've, you know, We've had other uh, producers from other countries giving gifts. Maybe we can give the 108 this time <laughs> or, or whatever will come out as the commemorative, um, you know, product. I have 18 participants. Can I get two more finishing? Just two more. If you're on the call, just try and answer the question. I hope none of the two extra ones are the producers. But I have 18 people. Anyway, I'll just go on and sort of give the summary. Um, I can see some questions we got all right, but there's some questions that are split between the people. So the first question was, uh, the first method champignon now Cap Classic was made, was a Cap Sir by Simon Sig in 1971. I'm glad everybody got that one correct <laughs> so far, right? That's true. And you've had it said over and over again. The second one was a bit split across all four answers. The term Cap Classic has been in use in South Africa since when? Which is the correct answer? It is 1992. Is it? Carol will correct me if I'm wrong, but I guess that was from her presentation as well. Awesome. 
The tagline for the Cup Plastic Producers Association is perfected by time. Yeah, you've had about the 12 months, you've had about 18 months, you've had about one or eight months. It's perfected by time. So the liquid that we get there. So of course I was trying to trick you with the time, time, time. Um, but you know, if we're there in the program as well, you had the answer somehow between you. So that was the correct answer. Then from this year, the legal minimum time spent on lease, which is the dead yeast, was moved from nine months to the 12 months. So the 12 months is the correct answer there. We moved from a human pregnancy to a calendar year. If, if you need something to remember. Okay, awesome. Everybody got number five right. That's really great. The regulation that the same bottle that the wine was fermenting is, is the wine that goes to market. And there was something else that was said also in this. The other regulation is have to be at least three bars, which is the same amount of pressure you put in your car. Very, very lots of pressure in there. What brand was the top rosé in the 2020 Cup Classic Challenge? It was the Lomarine Brut Cup Classic um, rosé, which um, is imported by Under the Influence and is just over 2,000 shillings, which is around $20 in Kenya. So that's really cool there as well. The others have won different awards, but then this award is for that particular brand. Which of the following are styles of Cup Classic? There was the Rosé, Demisec, also known as Nectar sometimes, Blanc de Blanc, NV, which is non-vintage and vintage. The correct answer is actually all of the above. It is as versatile as all these things. So you could have Rosé or you could have, you know, non-Rosé. You could have Demisec or Dry, which is Brut. Blanc de Blanc, which is when it is a white wine, 100%, like the Green Man was 100% Chardonnay, I think. And then there was uh, that. Oh yeah, this one was a sort of tricky one. Okay, not tricky, but then I guess, just to let you know that we've had a Cup Classic celebration in Kenya that was in Mombasa in April, 2021. If you remember at that time, Nairobi and the five counties around Nairobi were under closure and there was no way you could have in-person meetings in Nairobi. I actually, at first it was gradually relocated to Mombasa, but I have never had such a great time out of Nairobi, living in Mombasa for a whole month. And we managed to at least host this successfully because Mombasa at the time was not under any lockdown. And um, it was just before I think Easter and there had been all this cancellation with the Mombasa hotels. The winelands in South Africa are tourism area. So you can imagine the same devastation they must have been feeling with all their lockdowns as well. So the coastal markets, including Kwale, Kilifi, Lamu, Taveta is very, very important to us growing. And I think anybody looking for opportunities, there's a lot of growth in that area and specifically for this category. Number nine was about the primary categories. I know you've heard that you could make from Columba, Chenin, Pinotage and the like, but the primary ones like in Champagne are Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. So, I guess the primary was a key word here. <laughs> um, and then last but not least, the top African market for cup classic exports was mentioned as who? Nigeria. Nigeria is the top with the cup classic as well as sparkling wine even from Europe. So the, the Nigerians love bubbles and we can learn a lot from them. I'll share the note um, that was shared by Caroline. I think Kenya was top five. What was the number for Kenya specifically, Caroline? Sorry, I, I didn't get a chance to look at the... You mentioned Nigeria, Angola, and Mauritius were the top three, but I know Kenya was either four or five. We'll check that out as well. So there's, there's room for growth, and I, I want us to be number one. And you've, you've heard the prices, really. There's lots of choice and great value in this category. So I'll draw the report later for this and uh, be able to reward accordingly. The South African High Commission has graciously, even with the Chenin Blanc, uh, provided gifts for the top three in the quizzes, and Zanella is here to confirm that. But I also know a lot of you joined with the Eat Out, um, the Eat Out uh, promotion, 
that we're also giving away two bottles of wine. We will use the randomizer from all the attendants because I, I, I was going to use the registration list, but you had to attend as well. So we have to filter those names and uh, post them on our social media website as well as the Eat Out website, and we will get your wines to you within the next few days to be able to tell that. So that will be published publicly as well. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. This was so great. I want to thank everybody who came and especially our producers and importers who make this possible by giving samples, by giving giveaways, and also just coming to share their knowledge. Um, you saw how everybody was kind of, you know, ready with their bottles, running around to get you more information. Should we have this again? Yes or no? Yes. <laughs> of course. Um, we should have this more and more and of course in person.